Have you not heard about what Dabo Swinney is doing at Clemson? I got a stance on Dabo. I shared it many times during the season. I said Dabo's going to have to evolve some. I think he's prideful. I think there's some stubbornness that comes along with that pride, but he's got reason to be prideful because he's had a ton of success up there and he has built a rock-solid culture at Clemson. There are so many positive things to say about Dabo that doesn't mean you're void of mild criticism. That is the extent of the criticism I've had for Dabo, mild. The reason I sound a little defensive is because Dabo has made some coaching moves Dabo actually offered a kid in the portal, and I had some people come back at me like over the past 48 hours and say, boy, I bet you, I bet you want to backtrack on that Dabo take. I don't want to backtrack on it at all. I want to say, maybe I'm getting an answer to my question. That's how I always left it. Me and, me and Jesse went and looked at the Dabo segments we've done. I'm very intentional in the very last quadrant of the little mind map I do for our segments. I always leave a question for Clemson and Dabo, because I have no clue what he's going to do. I think changes have to be made, not fundamental big ones, but I think some of the ornaments on the tree need to re be rearranged a little bit, and that, that has to do with staff, and it has to do with portal philosophy. To be clear, those are the two things I'm talking about. Well, the reason I feel that is because I felt like their staff had gotten stale. I didn't think their staff was elite, and their last three recruiting classes were 10th, 12th, and 15th nationally, which is good, not great, because the two before that had been third and fifth. So on one hand, you had big-time coaches headed out the door, you had recruiting slightly dipping, slightly dipping, and you had a total aversion to the transfer portal. Well, what that equaled was an 8-4 and four season this year. That's not hard to figure out. To me, it's not hard at all to figure out. He's shaking the tree. Dabo Swinney is shaking the tree. So he just made two big-time hires. He hired Matt Luke as his offensive line coach. He went and got Chris Rump as a defensive line coach, a defensive end coach, uh, to put it specifically. Those guys are like puzzle pieces at Clemson. Matt Luke and Chris Rump fit at Clemson about as well as any assistants you could find out there. They're high-level guys. They have, I mean, Luke's been a head coach and then worked for Kirby at Georgia and just took some time away from football uh, for Dabo to pull him back into it and get Chris Rumpf, man, big time, big time hires. And I don't think those are in isolation. What I think happened is Dabo got to the end of the season and did exactly what he should have done, probably does it every year. He did a full top to bottom self-scout and he did an inventory of his program. But because he's coming off an eight and four season and because there's noise being made elsewhere in that conference for the first time in a long time, and because the level of the program isn't quite what it had been in years past, I think he's shaking the tree pretty hard, and I think you're going to see some changes there. And you know what? If I ever doubted him, what I doubted is I doubted he'd ever lean into the transfer portal. Now, I cannot prove that he's going to, but it, it doesn't feel to me like the aggression that he's had in, in making some of these changes is going to be in a vacuum. I think it's going to be top-down aggression, and that doesn't mean he's going to take 15 kids in the portal, but I don't think they're done being active in the portal. Oh, that was a big hiccup. I don't think they're done being active in the portal this cycle. Um, how active will they be is the question. doesn't need to happen overnight. It doesn't need to go from we don't do anything in the portal to we're Colorado, D it, nor does it ever need to be that at Clemson. Uh, they have taken two kids out of the portal in the past four years combined. Now, before you go in the comment section, Clemson fans, and remind me of your scholarship situation, I know what the scholarship situation has been. They don't run kids off over there. Some places they do. Just putting it to you like it is. Some places they run kids off and they free up scholarship space and Dabo does not really believe in doing that. And so as a result, they have fewer scholarship spots open to begin with. I understand that. I'm taking that into account. That doesn't mean he couldn't have made any moves recently. It means that they haven't. And so I don't know how focused he is on the externals. In other words, what's going on around him. But the harbor used to be empty for a little while. Clemson was this big ship in the harbor, and there was nothing else in the ACC. And now Florida State's come in there doing it totally different. They have heavily leaned on the portal, and it's paid off. I mean, they were a playoff caliber team this year. They went undefeated wire to wire. They won the ACC. Miami's not going to stop. Okay, Miami beat you this year, and their talent roster is only going to get better. What they do with it is another conversation, but all of a sudden – 
you don't have top to bottom the best personnel. You don't have top to bottom the best coaching staff anymore. You're competitive, but that wasn't always the case. And so maybe that's a little bit of heat that's needed to be felt around there. They finished under 10 wins for the first time in over a decade this year. They were outside the playoff ranking top 20 for the first time ever. So it's not hard to imagine how Dabo would arrive at the conclusion that, yeah, I need to shake it up a bit. I just hope he is. I, I, he, doesn't need to, he doesn't need to rewrite the Tiger Paul logo. He doesn't need to reinvent how to spell Clemson. It's not a top-to-bottom overhaul that's needed. It's just tweaks here and there. And ph- philosophically, it's just, I used to love seafood but not eat sushi. Then I tried sushi and realized, oh, it's been great this whole time. I just didn't try it. Now, I don't eat it every night. Could, but I don't eat it every night. But man, I love sushi about two or three times a month. You don't have to live in the portal. But man, grabbing a Keon Coleman every now and then, it does not hurt, friends. It does not hurt at all. 